With Thanksgiving upon us, for those in the United States, it seems fitting to look at a Thanksgiving episode since there's only like four movies. This time I'm going to overanalyze and ruin the season two episode of Raising Hope titled Bert's Parents. If you want more episodes ruined or hear more about analyzing the portrayal of the poor in media, like, subscribe, whatever you're feeling. For those unaware, Raising Hope centers around the Chance family that lives at poverty or below poverty level while raising the baby Jimmy had with a serial killer. The episode begins with a game of balloon volleyball in the living room, which will be important later in the episode. It's a free activity, but involves the whole family and can get surprisingly competitive. As mentioned in the episode analysis of the class struggle in Springfield that I'll link here, when you're poor, entertainment needs to be something within your budget. Throughout the series, we see other games and activities like this, not just watching TV. Before I move on, a quick blurb about Sabrina. At first glance, she can seem like a tourist in the world of poverty. Having grown up in wealth and privilege, she is fascinated by the life that Jimmy has. However, she's had a spark from the beginning that she wants to explore the world around her and because she's working at a grocery store in an effort to make her own money and to try to support herself. Granted, she still has luxuries that Jimmy doesn't, but she has that understanding that being wealthy doesn't automatically mean a functional family or happiness. Also, being able to pay your bills comfortably and being wealthy are two different things. In other videos, I've mentioned the term white trash. Like many derogatory terms, it's a way of creating an otherness towards different groups. In the 2018 Code Switch article from NPR, quote, no matter who uses it, the phrase itself reinforces some pretty insidious ideas about the meaning of whiteness and, by reflection, blackness. By accepting the idea that white trash exists, people are tacitly accepting that there is another, different kind of whiteness. Normal white people, the ones who aren't white trash, embody all the things white trash can't. They're hardworking, educated, classy, kind, and good. Anyone who doesn't conform to those values can't ever really be fully white. Hence, white trash." End quote. Since the racial aspect of this is covered on other channels that speak better than I can, I'm focusing specifically on the socioeconomic part of this. I recommend reading the article as it expands on this further. Examples of this include things such as white trash parties and slum tourism or poverty tourism. The parties emphasize stereotypes and could be a video all its own. With the poverty tourism, one of the arguments is that it helps the poor and this exists in the U.S. as well as other countries like Russia or Brazil. By the wealthy, quote-unquote, slumming it among the poor brings money into these communities. This is extremely problematic as it incentivizes the area to stay the way it is to bring in more money. The money isn't going towards resolving the issues with poverty, it has racist overtones, and it still dehumanizes the poor by seeing them as separate. More on that in another video, but I will say, if you go to Google that, it weirdly has a lot of skewed sources that try to portray this as an overall good thing. But back to the episode, and Bert's parents call saying that his more successful brother, Bruce, is on an Alaskan cruise, so they won't have Thanksgiving at their house. Instead, they're going to visit Bert. Bert's dad even says, quote, It won't be as fancy, we'll likely have no heat, and sure, some food will be donated, end quote. There is a pause and he seems aware of what he said and assures Bert he's just kidding, but it has been a while since they visited. Anyone who has grown up poor sees the red flags. The call out of the blue, the under the breath insult that is trying to pass as a joke. He probably needs something from him. Whenever there is a change in someone's activities, it usually means something is up. However, it seems clear that Bert wants his parents' approval. As Bert is still panicking and thinking what to answer, his dad's assumption of the silence is that he probably didn't pay his phone bill. According to his perception, Bert isn't as responsible as his brother. Virginia tells Bert to come up with an excuse like they already made plans, but he panics and invites his parents and now they have four days to get the house quote unquote presentable. Virginia and Bert both make mention that his parents are rich. When they call, each parent is on a separate phone, meaning they're in different rooms and can afford multiple phones. Not necessarily a sign that they are rich, but when landlines were still a thing, many poor families only had one phone in the house. If we look at the house his parents are in during the call, it is arguably more upper middle class rather than super wealthy. Offhand, nothing in the house looks super expensive or new. It could be another red flag that something is up, or just some insight into what Bert and Virginia view as being wealthy. The next scene is a dialogue between the Chance family and Sabrina discussing how Bert's family has always judged him for having a kid out of wedlock. For those who have not watched the show, both Virginia and Bert were under 18 
when they had Jimmy and were not married. In flashbacks to his childhood, Bert is the screw-up in comparison to his brother. While Bert got Virginia pregnant, Bruce got into business school and did better academically in general. Because of this, they want Jimmy and Hope to go elsewhere so they can pretend that he didn't continue the cycle. This is also shown to have carried into adulthood, as there is another flashback where Bert's parents visit, and Virginia and Bert explain that Jimmy's job is good and he's looking at colleges, so yeah, they're going to try and be perceived as better. However, Jimmy is in heavy emo or goth makeup and comes home yelling that no one remembered to get him from the mall after getting a new piercing. They try to save face, and Bert and Virginia tell his parents that Jimmy's just going through a phase, and the response when the grandparents see Jimmy's piercing is that Bruce's son has the same piercing, but with a real diamond. When we return to present day, Sabrina is willing to pretend to be Jimmy's wife in order to feed into the image they are trying to portray. Virginia tracks down one of the houses that she cleans that belongs to a wealthy family and honestly looks more expensive than the house that Bert's parents have. According to the Population Reference Bureau, in 2002, 52% of participants believe that those in poverty are not motivated to try and better their circumstances. By trying to appear that they have better circumstances, Bert thinks his family will have a more positive attitude towards him. Perception is one of the major themes in this particular episode because all the characters are trying to create an image of what they believe to be successful. This idea that being poor is some sort of failing based on our own character, unless we're talking about us, of course. In the Guardian article from 2017 linked below, Cecilia Mo explains that, quote, it all starts with the psychology concept known as the fundamental attribution error. This is a natural tendency to see the behavior of others as being determined by their character while excusing our own behavior based on circumstances. For example, if an unexpected medical emergency bankrupts you, you view yourself as a victim of bad fortune, while seeing other bankruptcy court clients as spendthrifts who carelessly had too many lattes. Or if you're unemployed, you recognize the hard effort that you put into seeking work, but view others in the same situation as slackers. Their history and circumstances are invisible from your perspective." End quote. Since being poor or quote, poor what trash, is seen as this negative thing, by the Chance family creating this facade to Bert's parents, they're trying to show that they aren't those people, because poor people are icky and lazy and therefore bad. Part of creating this facade of success isn't just borrowing the rich family's home, but also hiring a caterer. They are aware that being rich is a particular culture and lifestyle. In this episode, Jimmy's manager Barney is willing to play this part, and his culinary skills are well known in the show. Not only that, but in order to appear even fancier, he is called Barnard, Bar, Bar, Barnard? I can't say that, instead of Barney. There's a whole history of names being associated with different socioeconomic classes that is going in another video. Emmy asks Sabrina what her family is doing. Since she was so willing to help out on the holiday, she explains that her boyfriend Wyatt has law school interviews and that her parents went to Turkey for an ironic Thanksgiving. Seems a bit strange that she didn't go to Turkey with them as well, but okay. The family goes to work staging the house and car to pass off as their own, and it does seem to work. However, the Chance family is still who they are, and the cultural difference between rich and poor is played as part of the plot. For example, Bert's dad says that he raided the humidor and saw several illegal Cubans. Bert is visibly confused, wondering why there are people hiding in a humidifier. But how many people in poverty are aware that a humidor is a special box or room to preserve tobacco products? Luckily, Bert figures out quickly that his dad is referring to cigars and then mimics the way his dad bites off the end before smoking. Cigarettes are generally more common among the poor, and if someone is not familiar with cigars, they may not know that the end has to be cut off before smoking. Mimicking as a way to fit into rich culture is common in other episodes. Again, these are all things that aren't exactly part of poor culture. The poor are more likely to smoke cigarettes and not worry about how they're stored. The terminology and language are indicators of the difference between the socioeconomic statuses. However, by creating this illusion, Bert's dad starts to treat him more as an equal. Though it is also worth noting that his dad felt no trepidations about helping himself to anything in the house without asking first. Meemaw has a smaller part in this episode, but one of the things I want to point out is that in the wealthy family's home, their daughter has a computer in her own room. Even though it is more common to see this now, 
Until recently, having multiple home computers was basically a luxury. At dinner when talking with Barney, sorry, Barnard, Barnard, I don't know why that's hard. Bert points out that he would prefer he shop at the high-end grocery store, doesn't specify a name, but says that, quote, when you're rich, you have no concerns of prices, end quote. The dinner itself seems to be mostly uneventful, except for the answering machine thing, and afterward, Bert catches his parents discussing a secret with his first reaction, being that he thinks he was adopted. However, turns out his parents are actually broke now, having put all their money in Bertie Madoff and Borders bookstores, and want to ask if they can stay with Bert since they're clearly doing well, and it would just be until they're back on their feet. We had some complex formulas. We just didn't factor in greed and panic. Yeah. I just need $805 billion by Tuesday. In the midst of all this, there was Bernie Madoff, an embezzler named Madoff. Hmm. Yes. Was the name not a clue? In the heat of the moment, Bert agrees to let them stay. Remember that quote about other poor people are poor because of their actions, but I'm just poor because of circumstance? Perfect example of that blind spot. Of course this image is quickly derailed when the actual owners of the house return early after a ski injury. They quickly pack up and leave, and Sabrina says that it was fun to pretend to be someone she's not, but still pretends to be another character before leaving. It's interesting that the first one to get upset is Bert's dad because they lied about having money. However, Bert immediately stands up for himself saying they lied too since they left out that whole not having money either and now being homeless. Also, the only person that actually stole something out of the house was Bert's dad, not the poor people in the Chance family, the once wealthy part of the family. So much for the poor being the dishonest ones, right? It turns out they don't want to tell his brother Bruce because they want to keep their dignity. Well, Dora, I've had one motto which I've always lived by. Dignity. Always dignity. An insinuation that poor people can't afford dignity. Even with that, Bert is still generous and lets his parents stay as long as they need to. After ordering pizza, Virginia and Bert return to find that his parents used a credit card to get a 3D television and bed because clearly the stuff in the house wasn't good enough. It might be strange to wonder why Bert doesn't immediately kick them out and instead tries to help them learn how to be poor. In the class struggle in Springfield, Marge helps her rich friend from school without being catty or rude. There are several studies that show how the poor are more generous and more willing to help than other socioeconomic backgrounds. I also link those in that other video as well. Bert explains to his parents how to be poor. First, they can't be picky about the jobs available to them. It doesn't explain if his parents have an education or not, but there is an age bias when applying for jobs, so it's possible that is a factor in what he can find. The second is that they have to live within their means. It then shows Virginia training Bert's mom on how to use coupons and get discounts for damaged goods. The third is learning how to relax without going to fancy chairs in the mall that cost a dollar. A dollar. It shows the family making shoulder massage train, something that also shows up in multiple episodes throughout the series. Lastly, they have to learn how to entertain themselves with little money. Remember that living room volleyball at the beginning? Things like that. Movies are expensive. Sports events are expensive. Museums that used to be free or accept donations now require a fee. In all honesty, public libraries are one of the few places left where people can take up space without having to spend money. As far as parks, that is actually starting to be less and less accessible to the poor. Again, another video. For a week, Bert tells his parents, see, you don't need to be rich to be happy. However, his parents can't handle it and his dad says, quote, we know you enjoy it, but it's a god-awful way to live. I mean, no offense, it might be humiliating to tell Bruce we need help, but it's not as bad as living on a budget. I guess I felt that was insulting, but what do I know? His parents bite the bullet, and when Bruce goes to pick them up, he is not willing to go into the house because he thinks he'll get flesh-eating bacteria. I mean, this episode is just a cornucopia of assumptions and prejudices toward the poor. As someone who had a job during high school cleaning houses, I can say from experience, having money does not mean they have cleaner houses than poor people. As far as hygiene, that's more complex, and then you have to factor in issues like lack of access to dentists or clean water. Again, different video. This assumption that poor people live in a biohazard home is dehumanizing. 
For those who want to point out the show Hoarders, not all of the families are poor, and mental health and trauma are far bigger factors in those situations. Back in the show, before Bert's dad leaves, he tells him that he used to think he was always a slacker. After just one week, he saw firsthand that the entire family works hard for little pay. But for him, he also says he'd rather kill himself than live like that, and Bert is a better man than him. The only one that appears to get any sort of government aid in the family is Mima with Social Security. The show has to return to normal, so the family enjoys the bed and 3D TV before they are shortly repossessed. Even though the struggles for the Chance family in Raising Hope aren't all hidden, in some ways it is shown through rose-colored lenses. What happens if Mima dies and the house is left to someone outside the family? What happens if the family suffers a severe injury as an unable to work permanently afterwards? I will say it does show that no matter how hard the family works, they are unlikely to get out of poverty. They struggle to pay bills and pay for food, so it's unlikely they are able to build sufficient savings. Should a family have to fight this much just to live day to day in such a precarious situation? Overall, it's a decent episode, and even though it takes place on Thanksgiving, the holiday itself is a bit of a footnote, but it doesn't detract from the story. Thanks for making it this far, and I'll see you in the next one.